Welcome back, y'all. Hunter Dole here from Philly Insider Podcast. And I don't need to remind y'all that the Phillies offense desperately needs help. Another poor showing last night wasn't just the offense, but you get the point. It's been really, really difficult to watch this lineup since Bryce Harper's absence. They need something right now, and that's why I'm taking a break from the starting pitchers. I was going to start going on that, but even though that is still a need, I think the offense is kind of a more pressing need at the moment. Maybe that's recency bias, but anyway, we're looking at Brandon Drury today from the Cincinnati Reds. Honestly, one of the cooler stories of this season, and not just because he's on my fantasy baseball team. I actually really do like his play style. 29 years old, he will turn 30 on August 21st. He was signed to a minor league deal at the beginning of this year and invited to spring training. Don't think anyone saw this coming. The Reds really lucked out with how he's played, whether they want to extend him or whether they want to get value for him now while they can. Um, he mostly plays second and third base, but can play some corner outfield and can play shortstop and first base as well. The versatility is huge. We will keep him in the lineup every day. Honestly, he's going to stay in the lineup. I mean, you don't want to put him at one position. He's going to stay in the lineup regardless. He's going to he's playing well enough to just secure his job at any spot in the infield or outfield for that matter. Maybe not center, but pretty much anywhere on the diamond. So, like I said, the the Reds may look to extend him, but Philly should absolutely gauge what the price tag is on him at the deadline. And the only reason this does worry me is because he hasn't done anything like this since 2016, 2017. Knowing the Phillies luck, he'll come here and just cool off and, and not be that guy. But if he does, it's a rental. I think it's definitely worth the risk. Now, do you give up a top-tier prospect for him? Maybe not, but you could probably get him with without giving up too, too much. I think you could, I think you could give up a, a decent haul and live with it and get him. And then if he does well, maybe you extend him. It's not a guarantee. He might want to test the waters in free agency because it's it's going to be his first time really getting a shot to get a good deal in free agency. So I'll understand that. But I think it's worth kind of taking a shot at him for this year. But that being said, it's been fun to watch him this year. Let's talk about his defense real quick before we get into this offense. Not a defensive all-star. Also not a liability on the defensive end. He He's fine. I mean, you can put him wherever you need to put him and he'll, he'll produce and he'll, he'll play well enough to where you can just keep him out there. It's not like other guys where, oh, yes, they're hitting so well, but they're not playing well defensively. Drury's going to play fine defensively. He's not going to, like I said, he's not going to knock your socks off, but he's going to be able to play well enough to warrant what he does at the plate. With that said, offensively, I love his swing. Very short and compact, stays very balanced, just gets the barrel to the baseball regardless of what pitch it is. He has managed very well even when not hitting fastballs. 12 of his 18 home runs have come off of breaking or off-speed pitches. And I believe seven have come versus breaking pitches, five have come versus off-speed pitches. And he's hitting 240 versus breaking pitches, 273 versus off-speed. Very solid. I mean, obviously you're going to hit the fastball well. He's hitting 297 on off of fastballs, but you want to be able to hit well when something comes that you're not expecting. And I think he adjusts very well for off-speed while expecting fastball and then you know, kind of reading and reacting based off of sequencing and just based, you know, even just right then and there, just reacting when it comes. So 8.4% um, barrel percentage, really impressive this year. He's tied for 39th in the league with Andrew Penitendi for a 19.9 whiff percentage. He's really not chasing too many pitches. His play, play discipline isn't perfect, but it's definitely getting better. In the past, he's definitely had some issues chasing pitches and overswinging, I think. It looks like a much smarter hitter at the plate. Possesses power to all parts of the field. You know, he's spraying the field pretty well. You know, I, I still think he's pulling it a little bit more, but I, I don't think that's necessarily him trying to pull the ball. I think it's just he's taking pitches where they're hit. You know, I, I think it's really impressive. He keeps his head down, his hands are inside the baseball, and he just lets the barrel do the rest of the work. Drives the knob of the bat to the baseball, and he's just hitting the ball. He's just putting the ball in play, driving it into the gaps, right? When you have that right center field mindset when you're at the plate, Good things happen, and consistently good thing, good things happen. He's not one of those guys who just hits the baseball without any lift to them, right? He hits it on a line in between the outfielders consistently, and that's why he's 13th in extra base hits this year with 38. When he was in Toronto, it looked like he was double tapping his foot a little bit on his load. Look, I'm not a swing mechanics expert, but it just looked like that was messing with his timing a little bit too much. Now it looks like his front foot is much more simplified. His swing is much more simplified. He's not doing any double tapping, no leg kicks or anything. Um, he's getting a good load, good short compact swing through the baseball, 
and he's not trying to do too much, and it's working very, very well for him right now. Um, he's not walking a ton. I believe he's only had like a 7% walk percentage, but he's also not striking out very much. 22.5% strikeout rate, which is a little bit high, but it's probably around the league average. Big thing here, guys, with runners in scoring position, he is hitting 291, and he is slugging 709. My goodness, I know there's a lot of guys who slug very well with runners in scoring position, the best of the best, but Drury being up there with, with those guys this year, Man, is that something the Phillies need, a team that has consistently loaded the bases and then and with no outs, mind you, and proceeded to get no runners in. Consistently there, it is historical the rate the Phillies are doing that at. Having Drury up in those situations would be I, I can't I can't even put into words how how much of a massive help that would be for us. So overall, while the track record is not there. There is reason to believe this breakout season is not an anomaly. His swing mechanics, in my opinion, they look a lot better. His plate discipline, like I said, while not perfect, has improved. I'd love to trade for Brandon Jury. I think he has made improvements not only in terms of his results, but in terms of his swing and his mindset and comfortability at the plate with his stance. I really like him as a trade candidate. Maybe he gets packaged with Luis Castillo or Tyler Maley or something like that. Reds have a number of trade or trade candidates coming up for this deadline. I would love for the Phillies to go out and get him regardless of that. I, I think this is definitely a guy, and I've been looking at a lot of candidates. When I started researching Brandon Jury, one of those guys you just really, really come to appreciate the way he plays the game of baseball. So I'm all in on it. Let me know your guys' thoughts. I think it's something that the Phillies, Phillies might need to do sooner rather than later, and I think there's definitely room for him anywhere on the diamond for the Phillies, even when we have guys return from injury. So thank you all for watching. God bless. We will see you all later. Peace out.